Good afternoon all, it's a Monday afternoon. What's RB doing out on a test ride on a Monday afternoon? I have come in to do a half day's work. Yes, and I am out having a test ride on this. And this one's going out to Rebecca, female rider, UM Freedom from WK Bikes. And you may notice it doesn't look anything like the original UM Freedom. This is the one we've done a custom refit on. So, standard UM Freedom, it's got those white lights to the side. The one thing I do like about this, watch this. Put the indicator on, you get a white DRL to the side. Check that out, that is a bit snazzy that. But you've got the white DRLs while you're riding, so it just makes your bike a bit more visible from the side. Now, this one, while the cars go past, we're under RB Bridge as always, Simpson Bridge. Tan seat tan pilly seat and it's got a little strap on it as well so it's a complete copy of the black seat that the freedom comes with we've sent these off to our seat guy that does a lot of motorcycle seats for us car upholsterer and motorcycle upholsterer and he's put us a set of custom seats on it now grab rails to the back for your pilly or to get it up onto the main stand you've got a side stand and main stand on this one nice big bright led and projector style headlight with the R in the front for Renegade. So, there we go. That is the Freedom, guys. We're going to have a little run on this. We've done loads and loads of videos on this one already, but I just can't stop riding this bike. It just looks very, very cool. Now, USB socket to the top. Under there is a cigarette lighter like you get in your car, but you can by the cigarette light adapter, it takes another two USBs. Under here, on this one, and I'm not going to fiddle around with my gloves, but there's two USBs under there, and it is switchable on and off at the top, so you don't drain your battery. Standard controls, horn indicators, main beam, dip beam, and your pass light to the top. And you've got the Renegade logo there, and you've got your start button. You've also got your hazards that flash down there, and your obligatory kill switch. Now the mirrors, off and up to the side. Look at the amount of view that I have out of that mirror. Just check that out. Now, when I get my arm there, that much, I say about an eighth of my shoulder is in the mirror, but I've got a fantastic view of the road behind. Side stand up, clock's down in front of me. Now, putting five litres in one of these bikes, <laughs> doesn't even show the first bar it's saying fill me up fill me up this tank is absolutely massive loads of literage out of that tank so you could go for a good week and a half on a decent fill gear selector rev counter miles an hour and your elapsed miles are at the bottom now it had 6.8 but when you put it on it resets back to zero but as soon as you turn the ignition off and back on again it will show the elapsed mileage on the bike. So let's just do that and just show you. Up close and personal, there we go. Mileage up, and it will show your elapsed mileage as soon as you start the bike. So it did have uh, about 6.8 on it, but as soon as you do it, it resets itself. But when you put the trip mileage up, when you've left it for a while, it does put the elapsed odometer up for you. So we've done loads of rides on this one. We're going to go out again. We are going to have another run. The audio is, should be really crisp and clean. We've no wind noise now. Mrs. B, in her infinite wisdom, she went, where's all the wind coming from? Underneath my mask or underneath my crash helmet. Right. Well, why don't you get yourself a neck warmer? So, in her infinite wisdom, she shopped Amazon for an hour and a half trying to find it and found me a motorcycle neck warmer goes down inside my overalls, up on the inside of my mask and right up under my chin to keep my beardy beard warm. So hopefully we shouldn't be getting very much wind noise now which should sort out my audio. Hooray! And we're not going to put the Insta up today but we will do eventually. I've done one with an Insta on a uh, Commando but I thought no we'll just get the, uh, the GoPro up on this one and just do a little ride me puddling around 30 mile an hour and then obviously the run down the main road at 45 but then 
back to the garage for a cup of coffee. I've got a lot on this afternoon, hence why I've come in on a Monday. It should be my normal day off. And we had a little chat in the garage this week. And uh, obviously Saturday is our busiest day. But normally Saturday afternoon, all the motor factors shut shop from about 12 o'clock, 2 o'clock. So we get an afternoon, so if something comes in, we cannot order parts. So someone comes in, oh, uh, my brakes have gone and that, all right, you need new pads. Well, I can't do anything, mate, until uh, Tuesday, because obviously Monday's an admin day. And catch-up day for me and Phil. So we've uh, come to the conclusion, what we're going to do now is work Monday to Saturday. So everybody now comes in on a Monday. So my junior mechanic and reception staff start at midday. Still going to be an admin day for us, but we get to do some workshop stuff as well. And I do a whole day Monday, meaning that Saturday afternoon I can finish at two o'clock. Hooray! And have an afternoon with Mrs. B. Now she's very, very happy about that because she hardly sees me. So I can get out of the garage on a Saturday, go home, and then obviously Phil said if there is anything extra and you want to work overtime, you can do that, or you can go home and chill out for the afternoon and get ready for your Sunday ride. Lovely, or work on your bike on a Saturday afternoon, which uh, I'm very happy about doing that. I get a little bit more time to myself. In on the rear brake, let's see, combined braking, turning left here, and we are going to rock down here. We're going to go a different route. But the motor on this sounds lovely. The gearbox is as smooth and as crispy as you would expect from a big bike. Love the gearboxes on these UMs. Really, really nice. And the suspension's good as well. Now, we was meant to be going to Donington yesterday, Sunday, me and Peaky up to Donington, Peaky and Rev go for food in the Bev. I got up in the morning, it is absolutely blowing a gale, I'm thinking, well it's dry, but it's just windy. Let's get kitted up. Started getting kitted up, and Mrs B shouts down, it's raining, no it's not, it's just windy. No, look out of the door. So, looks out the door. It is absolutely hammering it down. Hence, phones peaks and said, uh, don't think we're going to be uh, going to Donington today, mate. It is chucking a gale and hammering it down. He went, it's already been doing it for the last two hours up here. So we didn't go out yesterday. One of our guys did. He, uh, God knows how, but he managed to find a dry spot. He got halfway to Donington and it hammered down. He turned around, come home. He said, I was soaked to the skin. So much so that uh, my jacket and everything's in the airing cupboard drying off and dripping. So don't go, mate. I'm like, no. I ended up doing a couple of live streams instead. And chilled out for the afternoon. Now, last night we was on a channel called Dibber in the Wind. Very, very nice channel. Um, the guy knows his stuff. He's very, very clued up. And obviously I asked him a Harley question, so I don't ride Harley, I ride Japanese bikes, but one of the guys in there was a Harley rider. And I'm looking to obviously mod up the Harley just a little bit. It's got the old-fashioned indicators on it at the moment. And I just said to him, I'm looking to put these little dinky LED indicators that all the Harleys have got on now. Are they any good? Yeah. And then one of the guys messaged and said, stay retro, mate, because it'll add to the price of the bike. If you modify it from original, it will knack of the price so stay original which is what i'm now going to do but i am going to change my mirrors i have got the uh, mirrors that are similar to this sticking outside and i found some nice under slung mirrors that go on the indicators that have got skeletons to the back of the mirrors got like skeleton arms and fingers and hands and they looked rather cool and everyone said they do look the business and uh, they're full chrome as well black and chrome so they will go with the bike that's the only thing I'm going to put on a different set of mirrors and just smarten it up a little bit do a few bits and pieces on it but uh, yeah the Harley is under blankets at the moment so she's not going anywhere she is in the workshop or in my front showroom under a blanket to keep her warm not going to be getting that wet or dirty so we're going to be out on the GTR for the winter season and then uh, Come January, I've got Valentino Glossy, Sam coming in to 
give the bike <coughs> its yearly valet and de-rust it and get all the crud off of it so that's what he's going to be doing for me and we also found a new product now I bash on about ACF50 all the time and ACF50 is a very good product keeps your bike from rusting keeps the anti-corrosion at bay and our rep come in and he said to me what are you using to clean your bikes yeah I use a lot of muck off products expensive but very good at what it is he said have you uh, got a uh, motorcycle protectant I went yeah ACF50 it's about uh, 12 and a half quid a can well we do this stuff and it's made boy yeah uh, by a company called Scott Oiler and it's called FS365 how much is it a bottle well trade is about six quid a bottle but you can sell it out at about nine pound that's what the retail on it it's about nine ten pound so it keeps the price down and I tried a little bit on the GTR and you can put it on a wet bike you haven't got to dry the bike off it's water-based you put it on as soon as you wash the bike it comes off and you just uh, reapply the compound and it comes in a little one litre bottle and it comes with a spray attachment as well for the money so very very happy with the product I've tried it out so we are now going to be using Scott Oiler FS365 racking the miles up quick flip around the town again so definitely does the job this one it is absolutely a beaut rolling through at 30 mile an hour keep an eye on that speedo and it's exactly like it was like what a speedo up above the handlebars no we got to do is look down it's exactly the same as where the one is on my harley it's a little glance down yeah but you should know once you get to ride a bike what the speed feels like and i'm i never ever look at the clocks on the gtr because i know exactly what rev it is to the mile an hour i can just look down at my gauges or I can just listen, I can just keep my head looking forward and I know by the sound of the engine and what gear I'm in, how fast I am going. That's our posty. Right, let's head back to the garage. Another four miles on the bike, so that gives me the ten. So all the happy days on that one. Now, the question somebody asked me, um, I've got UM Freedom, how do I put it to miles from kilometres? Turn the ignition on and flash the headlights. And it, I think it's either five or ten times, but if you flash it in quick succession, it takes a while to get the, uh, the sequence, but ignition on as quick as you can and flash that headlight. Use the pass button and flash the headlight ten times, it will flick it over. Whether well, they didn't just put a button on it, I do not know, but that is how it works. so good this bike so we have UM Freedoms in stock if you are interested in one of these big boys and we've also got the Vegas in as well so go and check out the videos of those and we've also got a used one as well coming in on that front brake and let me just check that out lovely so we've got a used commando in as well if you're interested in an older one I think it's an 18 or 19 plate we've got one of those in stock as well UMs, great bike, big machine, water-cooled engine, basically the motor on it is bomb-proof. Comfortable, big wide bars, what more could you want from a cruiser-looking bike? And it doesn't look like a 125, looks like a 300. We're taking this back to the garage. I am having a cup of coffee now. And I've got my paperwork, and there is the Beastie, the GTR, sitting in the front workshop. I've got to put this away, so I've got to lift the shutters, put it all away. But from RB, be well, ride safe, and from this lovely custom UM that we have. Now look how easy that is, just to click back through the box, all the way down, into neutral, drop side stand. One last look. What a piece of equipment. There we go. So... Be well, ride safe, and from RB, it's a big goodbye from me.